What up, guys? Hey, uh, let's do an unboxing. Um, as you can see from the smiley face, this from, uh, was purchased off of Amazon. Not normally my go-to place for knives, but when you see what it is, of course, you've already seen it in the title. But when you see what it is, you'll see why. Now, straight up front, this is a $20 knife. This, this knife was $20.80 shipped from Amazon. Okay? Any comment that I make about this knife is in the context that it is a $20.80 knife. Alright? It is not in the context that it's going to be competitive with two, three, four, five hundred dollar knives. Okay, so keep that in mind and let's see what we've got here. We'll take the handy dandy package opening knife here. It's an old bent kitchen knife, the best kind of thing to use. All right, throw that package in away. See what we have here. Firebird by Genzo. All right. Let's see what it's switch into the box. Model F720 GR for green. And uh, this one is in green or OD green G10 handle. And uh, this is the same thing as the G720 model, except branded with the new Firebird branding. Uh, so you'll you see here it's the standard packaging for Genzo. Uh, it does have the newer style of pouch here uh it's you know it's a draw sleeve is what it is it's a little microfiber like you would get with your sunglasses or whatnot uh, i think they're pretty nice it's nicer than the older velveteen type of pouch that they had uh, this is the 720 it's one of the bigger knives that ganzo makes and you know what everybody has said this knife is super heavy uh, yeah, it's not the heaviest knife I own, and that's compared to some very expensive knives also. Let's see here. Well, fit and finish with the scales, liners, and backspacer is a very good. Uh, I don't see any issues at all around the show side scale. Uh, let's see... Okay, this is a fairly aggressive texture. Uh, it is a ground in uh, machine texture and it is variable. You can see it's finer towards the center and a wider machine and towards outside. And it's in sort of a fanned out, fanning out sort of uh, pattern. You know, not too bad looking. Uh, it is, you know, like when I say it's fairly coarse, it is grippy, but there's no roughness, no sharpness at all. Um, and I'll compare that to a zero tolerance model. And that's that big old honking strider. And, uh, uh, oh, what's his name? I can't even remember who I'm talking about now. On the spot and can't remember. I'll remember it here in a minute. All right, let's see. Blade grinds look fairly even. The primary grind, I mean. Uh, it's in a satin, so I'm not catching a real good reflection, but you can see the reflection pattern is pretty straight. So there's not a whole lot of dips or anything. On this lock side, the edge grind is pretty even from tip to termination. On the show side, also pretty even. Um, the edge, the edge is a little bit thicker than what I would like, so I'll probably reprofile that on the KME. We'll see what it is and how it cuts. The edge feel is, eh, it's okay. I'm not gonna do any paper cuts. This section of the blade down here, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I don't feel a burr. Uh, it just feels like to me that it's not apexed well. 
Yeah, that's what it feels like. I don't feel a burr on either side, but it's, it's a fairly thick edge. It's not really apexed really well. So we will put that on the KME and we'll refine that edge. And uh, as we've all seen, thanks to Birdshot IV, Birdshot 4, uh, we've seen the potential edge retention capabilities of Ganzo's 440C. So I'm pretty excited to get a hold of that. Oh, that lock is stiff. Yeah, it is stiff. It is not going to drop at all by hand at all. Or under its own weight, I'm sorry, not by hand. Uh, no, yeah, there's no play in it. Um, so it's solid. It's just not very smooth. And the Omega Springs in this lock, uh, axis lock, top lock, are stiff, as I've found a lot of Ganzos to be. Uh, this is the third Ganzo that I've bought, and I've found the Omega Springs in their quote unquote axis lock to be uh, pretty stout. They definitely need to be exercised a little bit and you can see right here uh, this knife is not going to drop freely. It's pretty tight. Uh, it's smooth. There's not a lot of grit in it. It just feels really dry. Um, I'm surprised it feels as clean as it does. It feels really clean. I've bought uh, multiple $200 knives that didn't, the pivot didn't feel this clean from the factory. Uh, so that's good. Uh, we're going to look down in here and see. Yeah, still not milling those liners. Uh, so that means this thing is going to be over 7 ounces on the scale. I don't have my scale out. I'm not doing a review. I'm just doing sort of an unboxing. And, uh, oh, Ken Onion, that gummit. Uh, I can't believe I couldn't remember Ken's name. Anyway, the Strider Ken Onion collabs, th the 300 series zero tolerances that had the, the 3D mill G10, um, they were rougher than this. This feels better around the edges. I had to go with, and I use an emery board to fine tune G10. I went with a fine emery board around my uh, zero tolerance to uh, smooth it up on the G10 side. So that's, that's actually pretty decent. Uh, you can see that these are contoured scales. It is a wide profile. Um, so take that in, you know, keep that in mind. It's going to be wide in your pocket. Uh, the pocket clip is the butt end mounted uh, deep carry. And uh, let's just get it out of the way. Yes, this it does look like the line steel, the uh, SR1. Uh, it is it is not a clone. Okay, it is not a clone of the SR1. I can tell you that straight up. It is not exactly the same. There are slight differences in it and it is not branded as a clone. Uh, is it a copy? Well, you know what? The handle shape and the blade shape could be considered a copy, but as you see, it has the axis type lock that Benchmade is famous for, and that is not the type of lock that was on the line steel SR1. It was a frame lock on an integral frame. So I don't know, actually, Everybody calls these copies, but you know what? It's it's not a copy, of, an exact copy of anything, even though it is so obviously based on the line steel SR1 that, you know, that's where people are getting that. Uh, we could call it a homage, but uh, yeah, I don't think that I would do that either because it's not a true homage to the line steel as it includes that axis lock so uh, let's just let's just call it a copy i mean it's close enough to call a copy and it's ripping off some design cues here and it's ripping off some lock technology and no bench made guys this is not as smooth as a bench made um 
it has the potential to be as smooth. Uh, I can tell you that right now. It has the potential to be as smooth if it had the same fit and finish that a Benchmade had. But you're not going to get that in a $20.80 knife compared to a $200 Benchmade knife. That's the difference in that lock, the feel of it. Um, other than that, it you know it locks up the same. It feels the same. Um, I think that the access points here, where it's milled out, this could stand to have been chamfered a little bit to pocket it in uh, for better access to that cross bolt. Um, to me, at least. Yeah, see, it's, it's you know, it's uh, pretty recessed in there in that handle scale. Uh, I like the matching backspacer. It's in G10. Thank God it's not an FRN. 99% um, of FRN backspacers I see are shiny, and they do not match anything else on the knife unless it's handle scaled in FRN, which, you know, can be the case uh, at a lower price point. This knife, it feels, you know, it, it feels pretty decent. Um, it appears to be a big knife, uh, but it's really not. I believe the blade length is right at three and a half inches. Um, the blade thickness, it's got good stock. And uh, like I say, when I do a review, I'm going to give you guys the specs on everything. I believe it's a three and a half millimeter. I believe is what it was from some other reviews that I've seen. Uh, the hardware looks decent. Um, it is in a satin sort of finish and the access lock components here, uh, at least on the face, are in more of a, uh, a bead blast type finish actually. And uh, then the pocket clip, sorry I'm out of out of camera here. Um, the pocket clip is in a satin, a polished finish. And you can see that even though I believe that pocket clip is ambidextrous, you can see the, how it's bent here. And now you flip that over to the other side and it obviously, it's gonna skew that pocket clip over to this side right here. And it won't be centered and aesthetically pleasing. I do not know what effect that would have on the way it worked in the pocket either. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this glass breaker on the butt end, uh, it obviously is one piece. It does not have a carbide insert in the tip. Um, who knows what it is machined out of and how hard it is. It is very shallow point. I do not think it's going to make a great glass breaker. Uh, I do not think it will. And also, as every other reviewer has pointed out, you're going to need some sort of spanner type tool to take this off. Uh, you can see it's got the four divots in it. You'll need a spanner tool to span two of them to screw it off. So, uh, since I'm right handed, I'm not going to worry about that. This is going to be a utility blade. It's going to be used in according to its price point, uh, size, and weight. Um, it will be, for me, it would be an everyday carry blade as long as uh, whatever I'm wearing is stout enough to support the weight because it is over seven ounces. Uh, I believe everybody is weighing these out at about seven, seven point two ounces. And I'll check that out also on my new scales. So there you go, guys. $20.80. Uh, we've got G10 throughout. Thick uh, stainless liners that are not milled, and they're weighty. Um, overall, it's a weighty, solid filling knife. The lockup is good. Uh, blade steel is 440C. Uh, as I said before, uh, thanks to others, we already know the performance of uh, Ganzo's 440C, and it is excellent. Uh, in addition, you're going to get your Firebird pouch. Um, that's a nice little added extra right there, something that you might get with a Benchmade, uh, although it would say Benchmade on it and not Firebird. But uh, 
is actually more than you would get with a lot of more expensive knives. So, so far I'm uh, extremely pleased for my $20.80. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do my typical new knife routine. Loosen the pivot. Uh, I'm going to get under some uh, forced hot water and I'm going to clean that pivot with soap and a soft bristle uh, toothbrush, which I'll do all over the knife to clean any uh, machining crud off of it. And uh, we'll uh, dry it lubricate it and see how the action gets. I'll carry it for a couple of days and use it and we'll see how the initial edge goes. We'll come back and we'll do a more in-depth review and I look forward to doing that for you guys and uh, we'll see you then. Later.